So now we have our center section. Now this measures, we want, we haven't put any paper in here. This measures about from end to end, six and a half. So my problem is I want to use, where is that paper? I want to use this paper back here to fill in this space, which I think is beautiful. I just think that's beautiful. Um, but I have a small problem because I want to retain this piece that is six inches. So now we have a quarter of an inch on each side. And to me, a quarter of an inch is too much of a margin. So I'm thinking of adding some side bits here to fill it in. So that's probably what I'm going to do. First, I'm just going to Go ahead and cut it because I know I know I want to keep this at six inches. So I'm just gonna cut it down the middle here and then we'll deal with whatever we come up with afterwards. So I cut my six inch piece and you probably can't tell, but we have like a quarter of an inch on each side that we need to, to fill out. So this is from the 12 by 12 Wonderland collection. What I'm thinking is cutting out like a piece here and adding like a quarter of an inch to this side and then a quarter inch to the other side. And I think that would look good. And then you'll just see that peeking out, that, that pink. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and cut. Um, for now, I'm just going to cut. Oh, what is this? How long is that? This is over one inch. I'm going to just cut a one inch. Well, I'll cut this. I'll just cut this strip off. And then I'll just cut this in half and add it to... this side, and then, well, let's see. I'm gonna add a quarter of an inch here, and then a quarter of an inch on this side. So, anyway, I'm just gonna cut this strip out, and then um, adhere it to my paper with scotch tape, butting it up like I normally do. So, I'll be right back once I get this cut. So, I cut this piece of paper, it's a little um, lo longer in this direction that needs to be, um, but we can always trim. So I cut that. So remember, this is six inches. So I found the center of my paper, the center of this piece, and measured it. We need about a quarter of an inch on each side. So <clears throat> here's this piece I trimmed. I trimmed the whole side, and this is this measures um, it's over one inch. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut this right down in the middle. So easy to see where the middle is. And then I'll be able to get the size that I, I need once that's trimmed down one for each side. So I cut <laughs> this piece in half. Um, it's not perfect, but it doesn't really matter. And what I'm going to do is turn this so these, I guess it doesn't really matter which way the swirls are because they're on both sides, aren't they? Yes, they are. So I am going to ink the edge, edge, edge of this whole thing, ink the edge of this whole thing with my vintage photo and then um, follow it through with that um, ground espresso. And then I'll be putting them together with scotch tape. So 
So I have my two pieces inked on the outside and this is inked. So what I think I'm going to do instead of using score tape, I mean uh, scotch tape, is I am just going to kind of adhere this piece to this piece, figure out where it needs to go, get my center, make sure my center is this goes over here, Carla. There. There's my center like that. So I know where it needs to go. And I think I'm just going to adhere this to this piece. And then same thing on this side. Adhere it to this piece and get it all squared up. Just move it over just a little bit, but you get the idea. I know it's a pain in the butt, and it's all because I want to preserve that six inch paper. Um, if you chose another paper you, and you don't really want to preserve this piece, but this is such a beautiful piece, I want to keep it. So I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to get it all situated up and probably going to trim the bottom a little bit. It's a little too long, but get the top part adhered all the way down, and then we'll trim the bottom. So I'm going to be working on that. So I got my sides adhered. Could you have done this differently? Of course. <laughs> you could have used um, any any solid piece of cardstock and put it back in here and just have those pieces hanging out and then put this whole thing on top of it and not have to do all this fiddling. But I didn't want, I wanted to use the paper from the paper collection, but I didn't want to waste a whole back piece. And so I just did these little strips. It wasn't that hard. So now we can fit it in here and I'm going to have to trim off a little bit from the bottom. Not not much, just a tad. And then I'll have that that in place. So this is what I'm going to do. I cut this piece off of here. I measured one and three quarter inches up. That's going to be adhered down here like this and then just adhere this with um, glue on three sides. And so this, this piece is going to go almost to the top here. It's going to be aligned, you can see, at the bottom down here. This is like one eighth of an inch up that I drew that line. So that's gonna go down there and adhere it so it, you've got your space for your fold lines. I'm going to put that down. I was going to put a waterfall in here, but it was way too bulky. I would have had to add another gusset, and I go, no, no, way, way too much. So we're just going to put this down and figure out what we're going to do on the side. This is kind of busy, so we need to make this not so busy. Okay, so this is down. Now, I don't have too many non-busy pieces left. So this is from the collection. I cut it, um, whatever, eight and a half, eight and three eighths high. I'm going to be using the edge up here and this side for this one. And then here's the other side that has this edge right here. So that's going to go on this flap, which is the exact same size. So they're both going to be using the edges of this 12 by 12 paper. So I'm going to get those cut.
So next, you're going to cut two pieces of craft cardstock if you have it. If not, use any color that you can use cream color too, or ivory color. It doesn't really matter. I'm just using craft. Um, two pieces of craft cardstock, four and seven eighths by four and one eighth inch. And what you're going to do with these, you're going to be painting the edges with the any type of metallic gold um, paint, um, paint. You can get this at Michael's. And it's not hard, you just slop it on. Just go around the edges. I'm doing a really good job. <laughs> and then on one side, you want to um, have like a one inch swath that's painted. And you'll see why in a once this dries and we put what we're gonna put on it. And then uh, after this dries, I put it under a book just to flatten it out a little bit. So I want it to flatten. Okay, come on. Let's just get, get you on there. So the, this is starting to roll. That's why curve, because it's wet. So that's why I put it under the book after it's dried to flatten it out. So that's one piece. Here's the other one. you don't want to use the gold metallic paint, that's fine too. Just um, use ivory cardstock and you don't need to do this. It just, it just kind of brings out some sparkle. So once you finished painting them roughly, uh, Rinse out your brushes and set these aside and let them dry. So at this point, I wanted to come back to the completed album to show you, to show you what's going on. Um, you put this piece in. You have your little, this little tiny tuck spot pocket down here. You've cut these pieces, these two side flaps. Don't put them in yet. In the original vi video, I put them in and then I had to take them off because we are going to be using button tie closures here and we are going to be poking holes through the back of this cardstock. So that's why I said go ahead and cut them, but do not adhere them down yet until after we get our buttons in. On this side, you are going to be adding a ribbon pull, another ribbon pull. So I think we have like three ribbon poles in this one, two, three. Yes, three ribbon poles in this this uh, this album. So I wanted to make sure you didn't forget to put this ribbon pole in here and have your your paper down, and then you don't have a ribbon pole. So that's why you are not adhering these two down yet. Next, we are going to be working on covering the back of these envelopes, these little pockets. So you have these pockets made. We have not decorated them yet. In the video, I am going to show you how to decorate the back side and then the front side. Don't be concerned that I am decorating them 
without the pockets being adhered. That's just the way I did it. But you can decorate them in, in this state too. So we're going to start with the decoration of the back of these flip envelopes. Pockets, I mean, flip it pockets, okay? Okay? Just want to make sure you know where we are. We have not decorated this yet. So now we're going to go to these, these flaps. So we're going to start, this flap goes over this way, and this flap is going to be on top. So on this flap, we are going to be putting these pocket pieces that we made. They're going to be here and here. So they should be the exact same height as the, the flip page. And we're going to adhere them to right on top at the edge of this flip page. But don't adhere them yet. We're going to decorate them before we put them on. So let me close this, get this out of the way. This is the this is the back. So where we have our little flap, this is the front. Just put the front. This is the back. Front, back. So on the back side, we are going to get this piece. Remember this piece? This was our cut apart. We cut this off of right here. So we're going to get this. We're going to use this now. And you're going to make sure you get the writing, handwriting going in the right direction. We're going to cut a three quarter inch strip going this way. Three quarter inch strip. And for each, each side and get the right height. So I'm just going to put a tick mark on where the height should be. which is about four and an eighth. So I'm going to put, get my strips cut and I'll put my score tape on it and be right back. So I have um, my three quarter of an inch strips cut. I haven't put them down yet, but next you're going to get this paper from the 12 by 12, from the Wonderland 12 by 12. And you're going to go to this edge. See where it has the blue down here? It has the, the pink, the flower, and this blue down here. That's the side you're going to use. You're going to use one of these. It's going to go here. So you're going to measure that, cut that. I'm going to leave a little bit of black reveal in between this strip and this sheet of paper. And then I'm going to go down to this part and use this part down here. It, it doesn't really matter. You can just go straight, straight down if you want. But so I'm going to cut this one and then I'm going to cut this one because I want that to keep that blue in there. So I'm going to get these measured out and be right back. So I have my pieces cut out. I'm going to put my score tape on next, but before I do, um, I think here's our, our pocket in the back side. So this is the back side. I think I might just do a little bit of glue on the edge to close this pocket off. I don't think anything will fall out, but just I'm going to close that pocket and then I'm going to go and adhere this. This goes to the edge of this black cardstock, and then this will be right, right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for both of these um, pockets. Okay, so now we're going to do the front of our little pocket pages here little pocket envelopes. You're going to get 
these pieces that you colored or painted with that gold metallic and you're going to be adhering this on the on here with the one inch side towards the opening of the pocket there and there and you're going to adhere those down actually don't adhere them down don't adhere them down never mind don't adhere them down yet we need to do something first but what you're going to do is get these out and then get these two cards this one and this one and go ahead and ink the edges and then go ahead and put these on these gold metallic cards like this get it centered top to bottom like that and like this so those you can go and ahead and adhere down with either glue or tape so it's going to be like like this this one and then this one so i'm going to adhere those down with my tape and i'll be right back so you have these two cards. Now you're going to find this piece. This is just a strip that we cut off. And there's going to be this side that has this pattern and this side that has the flower down here. With this pattern on top, you're going to cut a piece that's the same height as this, this card, this square card. And you're going to cut it about 5 eighths of an inch wide for this one. And for this card, you are going to flip this thing over, and I think, let's see what would look better, this one or this side. Just before you cut this, make sure you cut off this pink strip, because we may use this for something else. This is a nice pink strip, so save this. And now you can cut this and then cut your 5 eighths of an inch in here. So I have my end pieces on these gold little um, pieces here. Now we're going to make our buttons. So if you've seen me, I, I love to make these buttons. I use a 100 pound cardstock. I normally use 3 quarter of an inch circle punch. And if you have a hundred pound card ooh, it's stuck, hundred pound card stock, I usually just do two of them, two to three, and then I just glue them together with art glitter glue. And you want them to be pretty firm and stiff. Let the glue dry before you punch your little hole in the middle because it will be soft from the wetness. So what I do next, I find a piece of scrap paper and I found this one. This is just scrap paper that we, we had when we were making something. And I've already cut out, you can see, this little um, flower this side. I'm going to try to cut out this flower to see if I have enough with this is um, 5 eighths of an inch. I don't know. Do I have enough? Let's see. Did I get it? Yeah. So I got it. And then what I do is I ink it. So I have my circle. This is one I've already made. It's stiff, it's dry, and then I ink it, and then I glue that on the center of it. So we're going to have two of those, and these are going to go in the middle of this strip here. And before I put that on, I'm going to get my pokey tool. Well, I got to glue this on first, and then um, well, I'll be right back after I glue these on. Okay, so the designer paper's on our little button, 
you put it on your cutting mat and you find you find the center where it intersects those those four lines and you put your pokey tool right in the center push down and make the hole and do that for the other one too Now we have our two buttons. So the buttons are going to go in the middle here and here. So what I like to do is get my pencil and just go through the hole and make a little pencil mark. Did it go through? Yes, okay. Hard to see. So now I can see my holes and then I just put my pokey tool in there again. What is this called? I don't think it's called a pokey tool, but everyone calls it a pokey tool. Where's my thing here? Here. So then you're going to get your brats, your mini brats, and I use Tim Holtz, um, these little mini brads, and they come in three different colors, like an, um, a kind of silverish vintage kind of brass one and this coppery looking one. I think I'm going to do the coppery looking ones and put it through. I've got ink all over my hands. Oh my gosh. Put it through the hole there and put it through this hole. Spread the wings out. And spread your wings out, push them down, flatten them down, and then I like to use my black construction tape to um, cover them up. So now that your buttons are attached, I applied my score tape. I'm going to adhere these to these little um, pockets. Of course, I forgot my magnets. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we're going to be putting a magnet in this left upper qu um, quadrant up here of this card. And then we're going to put a magnet and the lower left quadrant down here. And, and then we'll be adding our magnets to this closure. It will, will shut everything closed. Forgot to do that. I used my undo. Um, I will make a note not to put these covers on until you get your magnets adhered and transferred over um, in the video so you won't make that mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and get these magnets in, get this secured, and then transfer the magnets over. <clears throat> so we have some magnetic a magnetic closure right here. So let me find my magnets and get them transferred over. And remember, this has a gusset, so we want to square this up 
before we transfer. So that's squared and then transfer. See if it transferred. Yeah, good. Oh, good. Okay, so where are we? So we have on our right panel, we haven't covered this front cover. We just made these cards. We haven't done this yet, but we're going to start. We got our magnets in. We're going to go ahead and do this front cover. Now you're going to get this piece, which you cut off this for this side. So here's the continuation of this piece. So we're going to put this piece over on here. Let me get some white under here. So we're going to measure this to down here. So I'm just going to cut this strip down to the bottom here, and we're gonna fill in this space with something else. If you have this available, look for your pink stripe. We're going to be putting this here, and then we're gonna be adding something here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this, and the, the width of my piece here is, I have, it's five and a half inches. So you should have this whole entire piece left after you cut this part off. So five and a half inches width, and then whatever height you need to fill this in. This is what? Eight and a half, so it's gonna be eight and three eighths. From your scrap pieces, <coughs> excuse me, you should have this strip left. This was on the back side. So we're going to be cutting out, cutting off this gray edge, and we're gonna be keeping this light green turquoise part here. And I've already <clears throat> inked and cut my little pink strip, so that's going to go there. So once we cut off this um, this part here, this is three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to go in three quarters of an inch. So it'd probably just be, hmm. Well, what I'm going to do is just cut this eight and a half and I'm going to just, um, come back and fit it once I cut this at eight and a half and cut this, this gray part off. So here's my final piece once I cut it out and inked it, and it measures basically three quarters of a three quarters of an inch. So I butt it up. I'm gonna just butt it up against that pink stripe, and then this will be finished. We're gonna be adding something here. I was thinking of this card somewhere down here. But for now, let's just add this piece in. So we have these pieces in. Um, so we got our complete flap, our complete flap made. And now we're going to add this little so cutout um, from the collection. I just inked it, and it's going to go down here somewhere like this. And then we'll be done with this front part. So we have this front cover page done. So you can open this up and then you come to these flip outs and you're gonna flip this and then we're going to be doing this top flap here. So we haven't adhered this inner piece yet because we're going to be adding some buttons. Um, 
So let me put some white under here so we can see this flap. So this flap, you're, I think this is my last full sheet that I have left. So you're going to get this sheet and you're going to get the screen on the top and we are going to be measuring it for this flap. So you can measure it. I just do my tick marks and then cut it to size. And then I'll be back and I'll have this um, in place. So I'll get it ready to get in place. So remember this paper, this flap, which is inside, you open this up, you come to this inside flap on the right hand side. So get this measured, cut and inked. And again, be mindful when you're cutting into these large sheets. I have my tick mark here and down here. So when I put it in the, the cutter, I'm only going to be cutting out this part. So I'm going to preserve this part down. So I'm going to only be cutting this part from here to this tart tick mark. And I'm going to be preserving this down here. I don't want to cut it all the way down, and I don't want to cut it all the way across, just in case, because we are using every scrap that we can. So tick mark here, and then tick mark here. And I'm going to, I usually just kind of run a, um, a pencil line real light through it, and then cut it so I can see it. So we have this flap covered now. And these are going over it. We have our button closures. We have this one, and I just made two more, same way that we made these, only this time I used some of the pink and inked it. And we're going to be placing these here. So, oh, I almost forgot there's photo mats in here. <laughs> so, um, but that's the size of photo mat I'm going to be using. I'm going to be cutting it like this. So I'm just putting this in here just to let you know what size this is. The, the length is about five inches. So that goes in there. So it just sticks out not quite half an inch. So I need, I can't be putting my button right there. So I'm going to be moving my button over um, towards the here, which I don't really like, but it's going to be about right there. So I got my hole mark where I'm going to put my hole lift this up. I'm going to put a piece of chipboard chipboard, just so when I use my pokey tool it doesn't go through my paper. And get my pokey tool. Go through this hole. Get my bread. Open up the wings and just see how it looks. Does that look okay? I'm going, oh, is this one a little, it's a little off. I drew my line. It looks like it's, it's straight enough. That looks okay. So I'm going to do my other hole up here. And I already drew my line here, so I know that's the center to this one. And I'm going to make, do the same thing. Um, use my poke tool, make a hole, and put my other button in there. So once you're happy with your placement of your button, 
go ahead and flatten out those wings either with your pokey tool or bone folder and put a piece of black construction tape or some kind of tape over them. Ooh, this one got messed up. It's right next to my score tape, so. Once you have those secure, now you can go back to this piece that we had already cut out and inked, and I had to take mine off because I forgot we were going to be adding those buttons. Now you can adhere this piece back on. So I'm going to go ahead and here adhere this piece back on. So now we're going to use our closure, our tie closure. Our, I'm using this wax linen thread it's five ply it's wax so it sticks to itself it's it's strong it will never tear so you have to decide do i want it to, do i want this to be adhered to this button or this button i want it adhered to to this outer button so you're going to tie it You don't need any spacers with this because this is going to lift it up, this this thread. And tie it once on that side and once facing the other button. Well, not once. You're going to do a square knot on this side. Right over left, left over right. There. And then you cut off this bit but this is how it's, it goes. So like that. So I'm going to cut that bit off after I get them both done. So there we have our button tie closures. So I'm going to trim these bits off. So you have this flap covered. Now you're gonna go back to this piece where you cut out this piece. You're going to flip it so now you have this green edge on top. And I am going to attempt to cut, this is a quarter inch gusset. I'm gonna to attempt to cut just a little, like an eighth of an inch little strip to fill in this Guess it, but first I'm going to get the height. Mark off the height and and I'm gonna go ahead and mark off the, the width up here too. Now I'll probably have to trim this again because if I cut that little gusset, I'm gonna have to and I'm going to be moving this away a little bit from the fold line. So I'll probably have to trim a little bit more, but better to have enough than not enough. And so I'm going to cut through here and cut down through here. So now we need to do, so we got this, 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 this. Now we just need to do this page. So this, you're going to grab this piece. So this is the, the back side of it. And I like this edge up here as opposed to the tiles down here. 
and I am going to put this like this. So I'm just going to get my tick marks, measure it, and cut it. So you're going to be adding this piece to the spine, and it's from this piece. You should have some um, more of this. I actually made one, and then I, I cut it too short. Oh my gosh. So anyway, so I had to make another one, but here it is. So that's going to be fitting in here. And I basically kept it almost all the way from top to bottom. And I cut it at one and a quarter inches wide and inked the edges. So I think that looks good with this layout here, like this. So I just wanted to go through the right panel. We have now completed it. We have this front page. We have the magnets that are adhering it to this page where we have our little pocket envelopes. We have our button tie closures. I did add the charms. Um, these are the, it's a butterfly and a unicorn. Ju Julie will send these to you if you order this collection from us. And we have our flaps. I made some inserts for these little pockets. You open it up, you have this paper on the back here, you have this paper, the green paper, you have your ribbon pole, then you have the centerpiece with this area here. And I am just going to put some embellishments from the, the collection here. Just kind of put a bookmark in here and close this up. And so we are done with the right panel. And now we need to go on to, let's see, the, we need to adhere the front cover, the spine, and the back cover. But first we need to make our shaker. So that's going to be our next project.